All right, so we're going to do a little more practice with balancing here. Uh, so if we start with this first one, we've got sulfur and oxygen making sulfur trioxide. So again, we'll start with just one element at a time, saving the H's and O's for last. We'll start with the sulfur. We got one here and one here, so those are good to start with. Oxygen, we got two and three. So two oxygens, three oxygens. There's two ways we can do this. We're going to do it both ways. The first way is we can say, okay, we've got some coefficient x here, two times x, because two is our subscript. Two times x has to give us three, because that's how many we have on the right side. So two x equals three, so x would then be three halves. So we'll put a three halves here. And then we have three oxygens now, because three halves times two would give us three. Three oxygens, three oxygens, one sulfur, one sulfur. This is now balanced. To finish this off, we'll take the whole equation and multiply by two to get rid of this fraction. So this would give us two sulfurs, and we would now have three for our final coefficient with oxygen, and then a two for our final coefficient with sulfur trioxide. So the fraction method works here. Just remember at the end, multiply by two to clear out your fraction. So we can do it the other way as well. We have one sulfur, one sulfur, that's good. So when we get to the oxygens, we have two and three. What we can think then is how can we get a common multiple of these? The common multiple between two and three would be six. So we could put a three here because three times two will give us six oxygens. And then we could put a two here and then two times three would give us six oxygens as well. But now we've changed the number of sulfurs to two so here we have to put a two to give ourselves two sulfurs on both sides. So two sulfur, two sulfur, six oxygen, six oxygen. You'll notice this answer is the same as the fractional method. Again, just choose whichever method makes more sense to you. So the next one here, we have Al plus HCl making AlCl3 plus H2. So one aluminum, one aluminum, we're good there. Next element, we have chlorine, we have one and three. So what we have to do here is add a three so that we have three times one would give us now three chlorines. So three chlorines, three chlorines, one aluminum, one aluminum. So the next thing we're gonna look at the H's, we got three here, we got two here. So this way you could do using the fractional method, but we're gonna do it using the multiple method because that'll save us a little time here. So we have three hydrogens here, two here, the common multiple. Again, if we divide this up, the common multiple would be six. So we'll put a three here. So three times two would give us six. And then we're gonna multiply this by two, making it now a six. So we have six hydrogens and three times two would now be six hydrogens. The chlorines though have now been changed from three uh, to, excuse me, six. So we have six I'll just write that a little clearer. So we have six chlorines now. Six chlorines on the left, we need six on the right, so that means we need a two here. Two times three would give us now six. But now by putting a two here, we've thrown off the aluminum, so we now have two of those, one over here. So if we put a two, and we have two aluminums. So two aluminums, two aluminums, six hydrogens, six hydrogens, six chlorines, six chlorines. This is now balanced. So. We could have done the fractional method here as well. I'm not gonna go through that. It, it really, the, the multiple method works easier sometimes, the fractional method works easier sometimes, or you can just do, pick one and do it every time. Whichever way you find easier, that's what you can do. All right, so the next example here, we've got NH4, NO2, making H2O and N2. So it's important here that we account for all of the sources of each element from the compound. So we have two nitrogens here. Even though they're separated, we still have two nitrogens on the left. On the right side, we've got two nitrogens. So the nitrogens for now are good. Again, even though the subscripts are one here, we have two total. So hydrogens, we got four hydrogens over here, but only two hydrogens over here. So what we can do to correct for that is add a two here. Then we have four hydrogens now, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, we're good with that. So oxygens, once we've added the two here, we have two oxygens, and here we have a subscript of two, so two oxygens, so two nitrogen, two nitrogen, four hydrogen, four hydrogen, two oxygen, two oxygen. So this is now balanced. 
So all we needed here was just a 2 in front of the water. So the next one we have here, we're just going to do another example with the polyatomics. So we have carbonate here, and we have carbonate here. Because it's on both sides, we can treat it as one group. So we have three carbonates on the right, so that means we're going to put a 3 here, and now we have three carbonates on the left. So 3 on the left now, because 3 times 1 carbonate would give us 3. Again, if we're treating this as a whole group carbonate, so 3 times 1 would give us 3. We have 3 here as well. So the carbonates are good. If we look at the hydroxides next, this is also a polyatomic, so we have 3 hydroxides. Again, if we treat this as one whole group, we got 3 of those because of this subscript. So 3 here, 2 here. So this is where we want to use the multiple idea. So the multiple here, again, between 3 and 2 would be 6. So to get 6, we'll put a 3 here, and then a 2 here. So 2 times 3 would give us 6 hydroxides. 3 times 2 would give us 6 hydroxides as well. So we have 6 hydroxides, 6 hydroxides, 3 carbonates, 3 carbonates. Then we could look at the nickel and aluminum last, but those have taken care of themselves. We have 3 nickels, 3 nickels, 2 aluminums, and 2 aluminums. So by the 3, 2, and 3 here, we have balanced this with those coefficients. So again, if you have a polyatomic ion, like one group, a hydroxide, or a carbonate, as long as it appears on both sides, so we have carbonate and carbonate, we have hydroxide and hydroxide, as long as it appears on both sides, you can treat it as one group. So that being said, we're going to do one final example here, where we have a polyatomic that doesn't appear on both sides. So here we have chlorate. Chlorate does not appear on both sides, though. We have chlorate over here, but it gets split up in this decomposition reaction to its parts, uh, calcium, or oxygen, and chlorine. So we need to balance element by element here. So we can start with calcium. We have one and one, so we're good with the calciums. If we move on to the chlorines, we have two times one here. Again, this subscript gets distributed just like a coefficient would because it's outside of the parentheses. This three here does not get distributed because it goes just with this oxygen. But if a subscript is outside of the parentheses with a polyatomic, it gets distributed to the whole thing. This subscript tells us that we have one ClO3 molecule and another ClO3 molecule. Because there's a subscript here, this tells us that we have two of them. So one, two. So as far as counting the elements, though, we have two chlorines, because we have an imaginary subscript of 1 here, times this subscript of 2, means that we have 2 chlorines. So if we have 2 Cl's, over here we have 2 Cl's as well, so those are good. Oxygens, we have 3 times 2, so that would give us 6 oxygens on the left. Here we have 2 oxygens, so to correct that we'll add a 3 here, and that gives us 6 oxygens. So six oxygens, six oxygens, two chlorines, two chlorines, one calcium, one calcium. By adding just this three, we're now balanced. So again, if you have a polyatomic that appears on both sides, uh, like we did in this previous example, with the, uh, with the nitrate and the hydroxide, in this, or the carbonate and the hydroxide, excuse me, because we have carbonate and carbonate, hydroxide and hydroxide, both of these polyatomics appear on both sides. That means that we can use the method of treating them as a whole group. Whereas, oh, sorry about that. Whereas, if, as in this next example, the polyatomic here gets broken up into its parts. It was originally one big ClO3 molecule, and it got broken up into its parts, chlorine and oxygen. So we don't have this ClO3 whole group on both sides, Therefore, we can't treat it as a whole group when we balance, and we have to use the regular method of counting each element. All right, I hope these examples help to clarify any further issues you might have had with balancing. Uh, again, if you need to take a look back at this video a little slower, stop and try and recreate the steps yourself, please do. Thank you.